you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Today, um, we've switched gears. Uh, usually, we promote nonprofit organizations, but now we are promoting candidates all equally that are running for office for mayor, for city council at large, city council, and school committee. Today, I have someone who's a familiar face to Brockton. You've seen him at the school committee meeting. You've seen him in the community. His name is Bradley Soufran. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Um, you've been active. You... Uh, in high school, now you're in college, mm -hmm. and now you're running for the top job. Yeah. What brought you into the race? What brought me into the race was just the reality of the city. I feel as though it was up to me to really stand up and make a statement, not only a statement, but to prove that no matter how old that you are, as long as you have a vision for the city, it can get done. You just have to go for it. I, I live by the saying that tomorrow is not promised. And many people like to say, well, why don't you just wait until later in your life? Well, what if I don't wake up tomorrow? So I feel as though if I have this passion and this energy and this drive right now, it was only right that I stepped up and did everything that I wanted done. Well, two years ago in Brockton, someone who was 18 years old ran and got elected to the city council. Mm -hmm. Down in Fall River, the mayor of Fall River, I think he's... I think he's a ripe old age of 23 or something now, but he ran, I think he was 19 years old. So mm. it's not unprecedented that someone of your age runs for office and, and gets elected. Mm -hmm. Now, you decided to get active. You didn't like some of the things that were going on at Brockton High, mm -hmm. and you went hearing of visitors at the school committee and addressed it. Mm -hmm. You also, I think, staged, uh, uh, I don't want to, uh, protest, is that the right word? It was a school walkout protest mm -hmm. to change the demerit system at Brockton High School. Right. To right. implement restorative justice in Brockton High School. So you didn't just talk the talk, you walked the walk. Yes. Okay. And you got a lot of people behind you. Um, some people didn't like it. Some people did like it. Mm -hmm. But this is a democracy. This is a country that was founded on debate, discussion, and dissension. If you really think about it, what did we do? We threw tea in the harbor, and we didn't want to be under English rule anymore, if you mm -hmm. go way back to when the country was founded. Mm. Um, you know, during the Civil War, there was a great fight north against south over a, a really bad issue that obviously got re re rearranged over the course of time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you think we've made progress, but then there are some days you don't think that we made any progress if, yes. if you in the current political climate. Mm. So... Um, there are, there's a bunch of candidates in the race for mayor. I think there are six all total, including the current mayor, okay, mm -hmm. five challengers. So here's my question to, to you as a challenger. Why would you be a better mayor than the mayor that's there? I would be a better mayor than the mayor that's there only because I have an understanding of both generations. See, I have an understanding of Generation X and I have an understanding of the Millennials. Now I know what both of us want. Now that means that I have a balanced point of view so when I get into office, everyone gets what they want in a sense. Rather than politics having to do with just the older generation. And I feel as though that is not fair to people who are coming up, people who are going to be the future because we have no say in what's going on. And we are the future. So what's not happening is that dialogue where generations are sitting down and coming to a consensus of how we can move forward for the city. Um, I don't think that's happening. So this is why I feel as though I would be a better person to be in office because I'm bringing a new perspective, a perspective that Brockton needs in order to change for the future generations. You know, but I feel as though as the mayor continues his reign, then the status quo is going to be upheld. The same old politics is going to continue, and that is what I don't want to see happen. What would you like to see different? Do you, do you have any specific issue? Um, like, okay, I'll, I'll, let's talk maybe downtown. There's been a lot of focus on downtown, mm -hmm. okay? But there's a lot of place to live in downtown. Mm. There's a few places to go. One thing about Brockton, someone I know has referred to Brockton as a food desert. There aren't a lot of restaurants here anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. There aren't any bookstores here. There is not a movie theater here. When I mm -hmm. grew up, all of those things were here and more, mm -hmm. okay? The big store at the mall, Macy's, gone. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Now, it's kind of nice to see Xfinity up there now and Staples, I guess, is moving from Belmont over there. But what would you like to see differently? What 
you know, from your generation perspective, I'm already a dinosaur myself, <laughs> although I teach mm -hmm. and I say that it keeps me young because mm -hmm. I'm still in contact and still in touch with everybody. You're very well connected to us. Well, I, I, I you're, you're the future. I'm slowly but surely becoming the past, okay, but you're the future. You guys are all the people that are going to be the leaders. Um, you're going to be the teachers. You're going to be the elected officials, the business people, et cetera. So what, I, I, I know Generation X, Millennials, Gener what do you think people want? What would bring people, a lot of young people don't stay here. They we, move. They're gone. We go. So what would you like to see? Well, one, I would like to see something a platform for young people. I think Brockton can become one of those cities like LA that everybody talks about, like New York City that everyone talks about. But you know why those cities are talked about? It's because the young people there have a platform to showcase what they can offer to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and being a person of the community for these past four years, I've realized that we have so many people with talents, mm -hmm. with, with ideas, with business plans. You'll be surprised how many 18, 19, 20 year olds are starting their own clothing line, mm -hmm. starting their own business. They just don't have the right foundation nor guidance. Now, what I would like to see is downtown on Frederick Douglass Avenue, I see there's a building and it, this talks about their, them bringing a restaurant, but again, I, I personally, not to throw down anyone else's idea, I just do not see what that's going to do for the future generations of Brockton. We gotta think about the future here. How can we groom them to become these leaders tomorrow? Because if we do not groom them, then our city will not change. We have to think about long, the longevity of, of, of the resources that we have here. So when I talk to voters, I talk to everybody, I'm like, so what would you like to see in Brockton? Mm -hmm. They always said, create something for the kids. Create something for the young inner city kids. Create something for them to do. Well, unless they're involved in music, like at Brock and High, like we were talking about before we were on camera, or sports, mm -hmm. what is there to do? One thing I've heard for years in Brockton is there's no teen center. Mm. I worked in Sharon, and there was a community center, and mm -hmm. everybody went there, multi-generational. It wasn't just kids or seniors, it was both, mm -hmm. and they kind of interacted. Mm -hmm. um, if towns can do it, certainly a city can do it. So you're going to school right now, correct? You're at uh, Bunker Hill? Yes. What are you going for? Sociology. Sociology, okay. So sociology crossed a lot of different paths. Mm -hmm. I think that's what my father's degree was at one point before he became, my dad was a parole officer. Mm. And then he was director of parole and he always dealt with his clients thinking that he was going to help them to rehabilitate and come out and be back out on the street and do businesses. And he was very successful because he actually believed in them. He didn't call them criminals. He he said they were clients. When he retired, he became the director at the Mainspring House mm. for 18 months. Mm. Okay, He ran it a little differently than it's run now, but he it, he was involved in that. We couldn't get him home at night because he was so busy playing with the children that it's like, Dad, you coming home? Mm -hmm. You're going to come home to your family? He, but he loved the job. But um, there, were, there were big issues out there. There were issues we still struggle with, like something on the table right now is the desal plant, the desalization plant for the secondary water source. The mayor has floated a proposal that he wants us to buy it. Right now we're renting it, $6 million a year, and we're not using it. There's a secondary source that's being considered as well to hook up to the MWRA. What do you think about something like that? Because the city was under a water ban for years and years and years. We had to identify a secondary source. We identified it, but we didn't use it. How does that play into the picture? Well, I can see from Bill Carpenter's point of view, he just wants to control our resources. You know, I think that that is something that, at the end of the day, if whether you choose to agree with it or not, there's benefits and then like there's pros, there's cons. And I feel as though depending on the perspective of the person that's looking at the situation, they will form their opinion and their opinion may not be aligned with Bill Carpenter's. Mm -hmm. And if it seems like majority of the things that Bill Carpenter has proposed into the community has not been passed by the community. Let's talk about the casino. That was another thing that he was advocating for that did not go through. So it seems like from my perspective, whatever he is throwing out is not getting registered with the people. So then the people have to go to Bill Carpenter and say, well, here's what we would like. And I don't think we're doing that. And since we're not doing that, the only thing I see the people doing is combating all of his ideas. And I put myself in that shoe and I put myself in his position and I'm like, well, 
if the people was not meeting me halfway and every idea that I throw out into the community is getting, getting you know, um, combated with, you know, no this, no that, then it may discourage a person from running. So whatever it is that we want, we have to put out there. We have to bring it to the city council. Even if it's for education, we have to bring it to the school committee. I just feel as though the accountability has to go towards the people, and it's our for our citizens. Is that what you're hearing when you're out there talking to people? What are you hearing from the people? I just got the five-minute cue, just okay. so you know. Wow. What are you hearing from the people um, that are issues that either you connect with or you agree with them, you know, different from the current administration? Well, they're, they're, very, they're very mad at the fact that they pay taxes and their streets look the way it looks. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is uh, that we've invested so much into public safety, but the people don't trust the public safety because each time that we call public safety, they get there um, very late. They're not getting there on time. Sometimes they don't even, this is from the citizens, mm -hmm. you know, they don't get there at all. Um, homelessness. Homelessness is another problem. They're citizens as well. I went and spoke to them and they said that they need a rehabilitation center. They need somewhere where they can be rehabilitated and put back on to get jobs. But they're not getting any help from the city. And on top of that, the current mayoral, mayoral administration does not want to feed them. He, they, they said that anyone who comes with food um, and wants to feed the homeless, they will be arrested on the spot. And that's what police have told them. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. there's many things going on under the scenes that we have no knowledge of. That's not even to the public's eye. So I feel as though the people just want change. Mm -hmm. And what has been going around has been the same. Well, usually you don't have that many candidates in a race. There are five candidates challenging the mayor. So if That's people the problem. are looking for change, there's, there's, there's opportunities for change. But I just got the three-minute queue. I want to give you two of those minutes. Okay. I want you to tell people your contact information, your website, your phone number, how to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. and forget I'm here. Talk to the people okay. and tell them why they should elect Bradley. Okay. Bradley Soufran, if you want to see many of the things that I do, go on my Facebook page, Bradley Soufran, and go on my videos and see how I've been really making moves, not excuses. Um, I always say that I feel as though candidates make excuses as to why change cannot be done. And I feel as though because I'm young and I have the passion and I have the drive, I just get it done. I feel as though you should vote for me because I have a futuristic view on how Brockton can change. I think it's really important that no matter who's watching that, you meet me halfway. And when I say you meet me halfway, I mean to tell you that don't just think that you're going to put your faith onto one person to get things done. It's going to have to be a unified effort to bring change into our city. And that's just the reality of the situation. So if you want to see change, if you want to find a new way of politics and understanding that we are politics. Everything that we do is politics. Every decision that you make is politics. If you have that understanding, come meet me halfway and make a change in our community. Because I can't do this alone. I need you. We need each other. You and know? real quick, I got the one minute. 30 seconds is yours. Phone number, website, how to get you. 508-846-2872. Elect Bradley Soufrant at gmail.com is my email. Bradley Soufrant on Instagram and Facebook. And again, reach out. Talk to me. Reach out. Send me emails. Give me ideas. I need help. <laughs> Thank you, Bradley. No problem. Pleasure, as always. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more information about the candidates for mayor, council at large, city council, and school committee. Most of all, don't sit on the sidelines. Don't complain. Go on September 19th, Tuesday, and vote your conscience. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.